Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and this is day three of the 12 days of junk journal gift ideas that is put on by several members of the Friendly Junk Journal People Facebook group. Do check below in the description box for links to the other members that are participating, as well as the products that I use and my blog. Today, the idea is we are to make an envelope and then decorate that envelope to hopefully inspire you, get ideas of something that you could put together as a gift for maybe a friend or maybe you just want to go ahead and put this together put a note in it and give it as a gift that way so to start with I have a oversized book page or what I call a family Bible book page I like using either dictionary pages or Bible pages because then I don't have to worry about questionable wording in my book page because I don't plan to alter the book page too much. I want to be able to see the text. So right off the bat, what I'm going to do is trim off the white areas of this piece of paper. So I'm just going to use my paper cutter and trim this down so that there's not any white areas or non-text areas. All right, so now I have this piece of paper that I want to use to make my envelope. And what I did was I found that if I just slightly crease it in the center and then use that as a guide to fold when it's lengthways the sides in just a smidge over past that crease and then come back this way then I end up with about a four and a half inch wide base, okay? I wanna make sure it's somewhat straight. Then on the bottom, I'll fold up oh, about a half an inch, maybe. It could be less, could be more. And then this is going to be my top area, so I'll fold it down almost or right about an inch on the top. So I've made this folded piece. The nice thing that I like to do just so that it's easier is to go ahead and add some distress inks to the edge so I know where the start and stop is, if you will. So I've kind of done a few of the areas like right here where this fold comes together. I have a fold that goes this way across the bottom. So I'm just gonna fold it back and basically I'm putting just enough distress ink on there so I can distinguish where this rectangle is. And I'll take my scissors and I'll cut or remove that little rectangle. And I'm gonna do that four times. This is a great way to make an envelope if you don't have a template and you can just use whatever size paper that you already have. And you can choose to save these, use them for collage or something. I've got a little bin that I put them in. All right, so I'm looking at this again, and I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of Distress Ink to my flap on the inside. Make sure that I also have it on the outside. And I've got my Crocodile Corner Chomper, so I'm gonna go to the quarter inch side with my envelope kind of folded up. I will round the corners here. All right, this has got distress inks on it. If you want a darker image on this, or a darker edge, just go ahead and keep adding until you get it the way that you want. All right, so I've pretty much got this where I want it. So now what I'm gonna do is put glue going down the inside of the flap here, and then along this edge on the other side. That way I don't put too much and I don't end up closing my envelope down the middle. And I found that if I let this dry for a moment, it's better if you hold it open or set it somewhere so that it doesn't accidentally glue shut, because I've done that a few times. Once this is dry, I've got a little, I think this is a half inch round punch. If you've got a bigger punch, you can use that. Just know that depending on the size of your envelope, you may not be able to get the punch in there. This one happens to fit. So I'm just going to come down just a little bit and punch a half circle out. So I've got this little half circle right there. I'll go ahead and apply some distress inks on that little circle. I'll go ahead and glue this shut by adding a little bit of glue across the bottom. And I will leave the top the way it is. 
And this is the front of my envelope. So here's the back and here is the front. So I want to stamp on the front. Just getting a little scrap of paper here. I've got the Dandelions rubber stamp from Beeline Designs. And I have Jet Black Archival Ink from Ranger Ink. And I'm inking that up and I'm going to stamp it oh, somewhat over here to the left side. So we've added that on there. I like that. I have a rectangle piece of cardstock that was left over. Scrap of paper would work that's basically a white ivory or doesn't have any text on it. And it's about three and a half inches by two, one and a half inches wide. So I'm going to take my corner rounder and round it. And apparently, yeah, I've got it on the fourth size. So I've got that. And now I'm going to take my black permanent marker and a ruler. This is my fast way of making a label. And I'll use my ruler, ruler leaving a little bit of a gap and come down the edge and then rotate it and do this all the way around on all four sides. And then I'll come back in and kind of cut those corners just a little bit so it looks a little curved. So there is my label piece. I'll go ahead and add some Distress Inks Walnut Stain around the edge, kind of coming in just a little bit onto the label. So it kind of adds a little distressing to it. That's going to go on my envelope. But I also have from Calico Collage one of her faux postage. I think this is from shabby chic or shabby grunge again the link will be down below and I like that and I wanted to match what I'm doing here so I mat it with a piece of black uh, text white paper that I happen to have in my stash so I'm just going to glue these two together so I've got that framed and let's glue this down onto our envelope and I'll glue my label down right about there so we're kind of getting that decorated I have from the Postal cube, it looks like a cancellation stamp. So I'm going to ink that up with the black archival ink and just kind of do it across the faux postage and the envelope. Now, for the back side, I happen to have a little square of paper. I think it's one and a half inches square. And I've got from the Butterfly Beauties Cube one of the butterflies. And I'm going to do it somewhat at an angle on the corner and then I'll use the faux postage again and come across so I've got that portion let's get out the permanent marker and the ruler again and I'm going to go right around the edge giving us a black edge so now I've made this little faux postage so if you like that look you don't have the digitals you can make your own so this is going to go on the back side and be a closure for my envelope. So what I want to do is just put enough glue on the bottom half or third, maybe at the most, of my little faux postage and line this up and paste that down. I will usually leave this untucked until I know it's dry. So I'm going to set this aside for a moment. I have a piece of cardstock that is eight and a half by four and three quarters inch, and it was just left over from a project. So I'm just going to fold it in half, and it should, in theory, it looks like I have enough margin all the way around fit inside my envelope. But let's go ahead and decorate this little card really fast. I'm going to use the same dandelion put or rubber stamp and stamp that oh, on the right hand side. I like that. I'll use my quarter rounder again and go around the edges. And then let's add some Distress Ink all the way around. So there is my journal card that will fit down inside my handmade envelope. And this will tuck into the little flap here. And then there is the front of my envelope. You could also do this same technique with a smaller piece of paper and create a little envelope. This one I happen to have one of another of the faux postage by Calico Collage that I put inside. 
Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing an idea of making an envelope from scratch and embellishing it that you can use for a junk journal gift idea. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to my channel because I have more videos that will come out. Do keep coming back for the next few days until December the 12th as we'll have 12 videos total that will be shared on my channel and then they'll have other members as well that will be creating channel uh, videos. Thanks again for watching. Do know I go live on Mondays at 3.45 p.m. Central Standard Time. And on Thursdays at Thursdays at 12.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, I have a live premiere or recorded video. And you can come and chat and ask questions while I'm in the chat live with you. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.